Hey, welcome to Socialism for All. Today's date is January 21st, 2022. In this article, we're going to take a look at a couple of different articles about people working sick during the pandemic due to government policy and employer demands. And particularly, we're going to look at the people you would least like to see working sick, healthcare workers. If you like this video, please click like and subscribe and consider supporting on Patreon at patreon.com slash socialism for all. There's a link to Patreon in the video description. So let's get to our first article. This is from RT dated 9 January 2022. The headline is California asks sick healthcare staff to come to work. The new guidance comes after the state issued a wide ranging vaccine mandate. Okay, so Less than a month after issuing a strict vaccine mandate for healthcare workers, the California Department of Public Health is now calling on workers with COVID-19 to come to work regardless in a bid to cover staffing shortages. Comment, we have covered this a number of times here on the channel. Uh, this policy may work for a few weeks beyond that. I mean, it's just crazy. Um, according to new guidelines issued by the California Department of Public Health, CDPH, on Saturday, Healthcare workers who test positive for COVID-19 will no longer have to isolate and can return to work immediately without a negative test, as long as they are not showing symptoms. In a statement to NBC News, the CDPH described the new guidance as a temporary tool. <laughs> yeah, just during the huge spike of cases. Um, to mitigate staffing shortages and the increased demand being placed on healthcare providers due to a surge in COVID-19 cases. <laughs> Like, I feel like that's the last thing you want during a surge, but okay. The CDPH added that hospitals should have workers with COVID-19 interact only with COVID-positive patients, quote, to the extent possible. Otherwise, you know, you interact with COVID-negative patients and give them COVID, oh well. Continuing. Healthcare workers and their unions have fiercely criticized the new policy, quote, Healthcare workers and patients need the protection of clear rules guided by strong science. Allowing employers to bring back workers who may still be infectious is one of the worst ideas I've heard during this pandemic, and that's really saying something, said Bob Schoonover of the California chapter of the SEIU trade union. Furthermore, the CDPH's guidance also applies to workers in nursing homes whose patients are most at risk of death from the virus. Nearly 10,000 residents of California nursing homes have died since the beginning of the pandemic, with deaths in these facilities accounting for 13% of the state's total COVID death toll. Before it was clearing the sick to return to work, and again, just this was on the 9th, so this has been going on for like two weeks now, the CDPH was asking hospitals to fire workers who wouldn't get vaccinated or submit to twice-weekly testing. And just to comment there, that policy makes total sense. Healthcare workers usually have a whole number of vaccine requirements. And if you don't want to get the vaccine, then just get the testing. It's not a big deal. Like, I have no sympathy for that whatsoever. We're actually going to cover that little box up there with the, uh, the nurse who got suspended. We're going to cover that article. It's just, you know, just get tested if you're not going to get the vaccine. First of all, get the vaccine. But you have an out in the testing. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. Anyway, as of Friday, workers without a booster dose are considered unvaccinated by the CDPH. While a vaccine mandate has been in place in California since August, the CDPH said that it is, quote, not aware of another state with such comprehensive requirements after updating the order to require booster doses. Yeah, so commenting, I'm, I'm not so sure about that, but anyway... Though the CDPH said that its new booster requirement will not, quote, take staff away from already busy hospitals, California is not the only state suffering staffing shortages after issuing such rules. Well, commenting there, you know, so this is part of the thing with RT. Um, I think that there's a ton of reactionary garbage on RT, like a ton of it, like nine times out of ten when I look at something from RT, it's something like that, but... Oh, of course, we can't criticize it because, you know, imperialism. But seriously, though, it doesn't just because Russia is targeted by imperialism, it doesn't mean that their politics are good. It really doesn't. Like, remember that the people running Russia now are 
the same people who are benefiting from the counter-revolution and do not want another revolution to occur. Just let's keep that in mind, I guess. I feel like this often, you know, just escapes the discussion somehow. But anyway, um, so that statement, California is not the only state suffering staffing shortages after issuing the booster requirement rules. That's really not why. That's really not why. Yet this article is making it sound like it is. We've covered the staffing shortages, particularly in Rhode Island, twice on the channel. It's from burnout, it's from lack of safety, it's from all kinds of things, but not mainly the vaccine requirements, which again, are very common in healthcare work to begin with. So anyway, continuing, Rhode Island cleared infected staff to work in hospitals and nursing homes late last month after hundreds of employees were fired less than two months ago for refusing to get vaccinated. So commenting again, I would like to see that. There's no link there. Um, but regardless, that's really, they had been having this issue prior to Omicron as well. Yet this article is trying to make it look like that's the cause. Anyway, continuing, quote, Oh crap, we don't have enough people, one hospital worker told the Providence Journal as the post-mandate shortages became apparent. So again, really trying to drive it home with post-mandate shortages when this has been going on for a very long time and they're not discussing really any of the other causes. I find that incredibly misleading. So anyway, moving on to the next article about it. This is from NBC. The headline is, California healthcare workers raise concerns over new state COVID-19 protocols. State officials added that asymptomatic COVID-19 positive workers will need to wear an N95 respirator. This is from January 8, updated on January 10 by Marianne Favreau. So, with the highly contagious Omicron variant sending more people to California hospitals, the California Department of Public Health issued new guidelines Saturday in an effort to make sure that there is enough staff to handle the increase. According to new state guidelines, healthcare workers who test positive for COVID-19 will no longer have to isolate or test negative and can return to work immediately if they are asymptomatic. The new guidelines are in effect February 1st. It's a last resort for hospitals, but Sandy Redding, the president of the California Nurses Association, said that the move is a grave mistake that puts patients at risk. Quote, we are very concerned, she says. If you have healthcare workers who are COVID positive, caring for vulnerable populations, we can spread the COVID virus inside the hospital as well, unquote. NBC Bay Area reached out to the California Department of Public Health, which issued the following statement. Quote, the department is providing temporary flexibility to help hospitals and emergency service providers to respond to an unprecedented surge and staffing shortages. Hospitals have to exhaust all other options before resorting to this temporary tool. Facilities and providers using this tool should have asymptomatic COVID-positive workers interact only with COVID-19 positive patients to the extent possible, unquote. State officials added that asymptomatic COVID-19 positive workers will need to wear an N95 respirator. The article goes on. I just want to pause. I would really like to see an analysis of the effects of a policy like this if that can practically be studied under these conditions because, honestly, it's, um, it's terrible. Anyway, continuing the article, Dr. George Rutherford, professor of epidemiology at UCSF, said that the state's move is surprising, but not unprecedented. Quote, This is about having infected people taking care of infected people. We did this with Ebola in South Africa. We've done it before. It's not the first play option in our playbook. I think staffing issues are such that it led the state to put this guidance out, he said. Redding said that instead of helping to increase the number of healthcare workers, lifting the isolation requirements will only increase the chance of nurses getting other nurses sick. Quote, if we're going to set up for the surge, let's set up protocols to have transmission reduced, which means not having COVID positive people coming to work, Redding said. So that's the end of that. And um, very true. So you're not just dealing with the risk of getting patients sick, but other staff. Then you're potentially in a situation where your entire staff gets sick at once. Seems to me like the best solution here is to stop transmission because these systems are getting overloaded and to a certain extent there aren't a lot of really good ways to deal with this however 
you know, clearly having people come to work sick is, I mean, you're pretty desperate at that point. So what do we do? Go back a level, go more macro and set up policies where there's not this level of outbreak in the population overwhelming the system in the first place. And that's not really being considered. What seems to me to be considered most in terms of the politics is like from a PR perspective. Oh, how can we get it to look like the number of cases are going down? I know, we just won't count cases in vaccinated people unless they result in hospitalization. There, we can get a big chunk of them down that way. And, you know, it's a lot of it from this image management perspective, rather than the reality of like, people are getting sick, the human body is made of cells, and the cells can get infected with virus, and that doesn't really give two shits about your PR campaign. Anyway, speaking of things that the virus doesn't give a shit about, your religious beliefs are another one. So here's our third article. This is again from RT. And this one's from the 5th of November. So prior to Omicron, uh, but post-vaccine mandate. So the article is suspended for not getting vaccinated. Californian COVID nurse since the beginning talks to RT. So this should, uh, I think I have some choice words here, but Victoria Jensen, a nurse who recently went viral after filming herself being escorted out of her hospital for refusing to get the COVID vaccine, has told RT that her religious beliefs had not been taken seriously. Um, and I'll just comment, you can have your religious beliefs, but they may have consequences, such as you can't work in a healthcare facility during a pandemic if you don't get the vaccine. We'll see what these religious beliefs are that have anything to do with the vaccine in the first place, but let's continue. Quote, I made a choice for myself, and I think that everyone should have the freedom to make their personal choice. And that's often how this is framed, it's like freedom and choice and, okay, but this has consequences on other people too. We're talking about a contagious illness. You should know that if you're a nurse. Anyway, continuing. Jensen said of her decision to refuse a vaccine, which is now required for almost all federal employees and those who work for companies with more than 100 employees. Jensen made headlines this week for, by the way, I've never heard of this person before, but for posting footage of herself being escorted out of her workplace at Kaiser Permanente Hospital in San Diego, California. Quote, I don't know what kind of pandemic it is if they're firing nurses who are willing to work. She said in the five-minute video, which has garnered millions of views since hitting social media, um, if you're not willing to get the vaccine, I think that that's clearly what kind of pandemic it is. It's a pandemic where they want healthcare workers to be vaccinated. Super clear, actually. Jensen claims that she was put on unpaid leave from her job after she sought a religious exemption in respect of the vaccine mandate, but was refused the opportunity. She didn't specify her religious beliefs in the video, but in a new interview with RT, Jensen says it has to do with her Christian faith. The hospital, Jensen told RT, believed her application for a religious exemption was, quote, not serious. There's a quote in the middle. I wanted to get answers from the hospital as to why some random HR person was deciding that my livelihood was now in jeopardy because they didn't believe that I really had sincere beliefs in my Christian faith. So comment, my opinion your Christian faith should have absolutely no bearing on job requirements such as getting a vaccine at all. It has nothing to do with Christianity at all. You should not be exempt from that because of what? It just, it has no bearing on this decision at all. Anyway, continuing, quote, it's kind of surreal, honestly, because I love my job and I've been a COVID nurse since the beginning, Jensen said. The nurse is one of many who has posted footage on social media of walking away from a job due to the COVID-19 vaccine mandate. So again, here's this sort of like contrarian right-wing RT thing I find is just fairly pervasive across a lot of their stories. Uh, just bugs the shit out of me, but continuing. She says her decision, however, comes down to simple, quote, medical freedom. Okay, well, there it is. And... If you would like to not get the vaccine, then you don't work there. And that's that. Anyway, and the healthcare worker has no qualms with anyone who received the vaccine. So yeah, it's, you know, medical freedom though, but you said it's about your Christian faith. Well, which? Because those aren't the same thing. 
Many people, she says, did not want to get a vaccine but felt pressured to do so over concerns about potentially losing their livelihoods. Quote, I respect their decision and their medical freedom. I respect people who don't agree with me. This is America. It's a, this is, you know, the libertarian argument, basically. This is America. It's a beautiful thing when you can disagree with each other. That's what freedom is, unquote. President Joe Biden and U.S. health officials have continued to warn that mass vaccination is the only way through the pandemic, and the World Health Organization, WHO, recommends the same. Over 58% of people in the U.S. are fully vaccinated, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. Comment, that number is now higher. And also, comment, Joe Biden and U.S. health officials have indeed warned that mass vaccination is the only way through the pandemic. Uh, Obviously, we're pro-vaccine here at the channel. Get it. It's going to reduce your odds of having the worst acute symptoms. So you don't want that uh, for a number of reasons. Your own personal health, overwhelming the healthcare system needlessly, etc. You don't want that. Um, at the same time, vaccines are kind of a last resort. Uh, it's just like, you know, wearing a seatbelt is your last resort. You know, that and airbags in an accident. Uh, but you also want to practice defensive driving. So... You don't want it to come down to, oh, I got the virus. Now my immune system, you know, trained by the vaccine needs to do its thing. You want to avoid infection. So there's a glaring error on the part of Biden and U.S. health policy uh, that they're not doing shutdowns or N95 mask mandates, etc. Anyway, continuing. In her original video, Jensen said she was not given answers by her hospital's human resources department over why her religious exemption was not accepted. Quote, I want all of you to count the cost. You know, and here it comes, the fake tears. Just admit you're an anti-vax activist. Like, have we heard any reasons for this? No. Like, why don't you want the vaccine? It's, is it coming from some actual medical concern about it that is at all evidence-based? Or is this, you know, just right-wing contrarianism? Anyway, I want all of you to count the cost. I want to watch this and think what really matters to me because I'm willing to risk my safety and security, my house, everything for my freedom. I want you to think about that, she said in the video, which quickly spread among vaccine mandate critics. Read right-wing nutjobs. Multiple other nurses in the video expressed their disagreement with the decision to let Jensen go. All right, now I'm going to get petty and just say multiple others, bad writing. But then we have in the middle here, also on RT.com, kids age five and up in San Francisco will have to show proof, in all caps, of vaccination status. So are you noticing any kind of a bias or bent here in the coverage? <clears throat> Continuing, the nurse's hospital has responded to Jensen's video by claiming she may have been trying to use a loophole in the mandate by seeking the religious exemption. Comment, and that sounds, I mean, when she says it comes down to medical freedom, that sounds like the real issue, and she's trying to hide behind religion, uh, you know, to try to get the exemption anyway, even though it's not really for religious reasons, which, have we seen that as kind of a pattern of conservatives hiding behind religion to do things which have nothing to do with religion, but have everything to do with conservative politics? Yes, absolutely. So continuing, quote, we were notified by some of our labor partners and others of open online discussions around ways to avoid the vaccine mandate by misusing the legitimate religious exemption process. Dr. Andrew Bindman, Kaiser Permanente's chief medical officer, said he went on to claim that staff claim that staff applying for religious exemptions were turning in requests that, quote, similar or nearly identical requests containing language taken word for word from free and paid templated online forms, unquote. And that's the end of that. Um, I mean, you know, the, the using an online template, that's not entirely evidence of this. However, why do you have this religious exemption for vaccines in the first place? What does a vaccine have to do with religion? And if you care that much about your religion and whatever odd, like, stipulation of your religion... Should you just maybe accept that, okay, I can't work in a modern healthcare setting? So, anyway, those are the articles that we have for this video. Um, 
And we're getting it from both sides here. You get the contrarian, uh, you know, I don't want a vaccine for unspecified, you know, medical freedom. Oops, I mean religious exemption reasons. Well, why? Why don't why, like what what is the problem with the vaccine? Or are you one of these people that, you know, shows up at Burger King and holds, you know, nonviolent civil disobedience to get your Whopper uh, without, you know, being vaccinated? At some point, you just have to accept that, like, in a modern society, it is not all about you. This isn't Little House on the Prairie where you just sort of live off on your 10 acres and do your own thing. And in the case of the vaccine mandate for work, get the testing. Like, that wasn't discussed in here, um, where most of the vaccine mandates, you can get out of it through testing. All of them that I'm aware of, at least. So why was that not a thing? And was this actually just an anti-vaccine activism stunt? So anyway, you know, on the one hand, that completely disgusts me. On the other hand... We have the structural failures of the government trying to force people into work and pretending that vaccines alone are enough. Neither of these, in my opinion, is a socialist pro-worker position. What would be a pro-worker position is taking control of the economy, redirecting it in ways that prioritize human life, and stop the spread of the virus because that is going to keep coming back to bite you in the ass over and over and over again. We know that natural immunity wanes and it doesn't take that long, like six months tops and you can get reinfected. So there's a lot of crazy discourse going on. Um, the conservatives are off in total COVID denial. The liberals are doing a form of COVID denial that is like, you know, oh, it's not that bad and the vaccine is enough. And, you know, they make themselves look better than the conservatives who are like, you know, the, the virus is fake. It's entirely fake. You know, and it's like climate denial where conservatives will be like, oh, it's a Chinese hoax. And then liberals will be like, no, climate change is very real. And that's why um, we have to make no structural changes and just blame individual consumption or something like that. Neither really gets to the level of changes that are necessary to actually properly deal with the situation while centering workers, because neither of these ideas does center workers. They're both capitalist ideologies. And that's basically what it is, isn't it? I mean, and speaking of RT and all this, you know, I mentioned it's like, okay, you know, critical support in, uh, you know, when being targeted by the imperialist bloc. Okay, fine. But also let's, as socialists, be honest with ourselves that Russian politics, you know, the current Russian bourgeoisie, it's not something we really want to wholeheartedly embrace and be very skeptical of what they're doing as well. Obviously, that doesn't mean that we support imperialism invading them. That's really not the idea either. But I mean, if we're going to be critical of Soviet leadership for being too revisionist at various points and everybody has their own, you know, dividing line on that issue, can we agree that the current Russian bourgeoisie that overthrew or at a minimum benefited from the overthrow of the Soviet government is, uh, you know, several steps beyond revisionist communists. Anyway, somehow this started off as a COVID video <laughs> turned into that um, contentious issue, which we have not fully fleshed out here on the channel. So like I said, I hope to get into this more. Uh, anybody has, you know, understanding modern Russia, like the last 30 years post-Soviet Russia, resources you'd like to uh, share, go ahead and do those in the comments. Otherwise, any questions or comments on the COVID subject of making people work sick and calling vaccines good enough or, you know, holding up uh, anti-vaccine contrarians hiding behind maybe non-existent religious beliefs, let us know in the comments. We'll continue the discussion there as always. Otherwise, thanks for listening. Thanks to the current patrons whose names are on the screen. If you'd like to get your name on the screen, head to patreon.com slash socialism for all. You can sign up for any amount of monthly contribution or one-time contribution if you just cancel it for $2 or more. Otherwise, like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, even if it's just good video or thanks. All of that helps to boost the channel, helps to expand the audience, which has been growing. So welcome to all the new people and thanks to everybody who has been helping this channel to grow. Back in the real world, join an organization, find something in your area that looks healthy as a group and is doing the kind of work you'd like to see yourself doing and see more of happening 
in your area or start your own project. If you have an idea and the comrades and resources to get it going, we always like to see new projects. Otherwise, thanks again, and we'll catch you in the next video.